is Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is doing something. The Lord is doing something. Ah, he wants to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost today. Ah, Jesus. He wants to baptize somebody in his name today. My God. Under the unction of the Holy Ghost, Paul writes to the church in Rome, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I just, and I'm not want to be before you long. I just want to say a few things, and, and we're going to let the Lord have his way. And the thought that I want to leave with you is transformed into the whole armor, really being transformed into the whole armor of God is essentially a relationship being transformed into the image of Jesus. And, and Romans, the 11th chapter, verse 36, says, For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Now, when you get past in the New Testament, first four books are the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the gospel is in its total essence. It is the person and the works of Jesus. Now we move into the, the Acts of the Apostles, which is the blueprint for the New Testament church. And then you move to the letters. These are not books on uh, epistles, how to receive salvation. It's, these are essentially how to live holy, and they gives us a reflection on how we were saved. In Romans, the Lord moved on the Apostle Paul, and he, he puts the Holy Ghost, puts a magnifying glass on our salvation process. It lets us see what happens and how we got to the point of salvation and what the Lord has done. And, and he, 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 he frames his argument or this book like a lawyer presenting a case in court. In, in chapters 1 through 5, he is giving us the justification, how God came to the point of bringing justification to not just the Jew, but to the Gentiles. He comes 
to the conclusion that yes, the law was given to the Jews, but they failed. And, and, and even though the Gentiles didn't have the law, the universe witnessed to all of mankind the sovereignty and the glory of God. The, the universe testifies to the glory of God so that all men are without excuse. And then he comes to the conclusion that we all have sinned, Jew and Gentile, and have fallen short of the glory of God. And then in chapter 68, he gives us the enabling power. This is what God has done, what the Lord has made available to the believers. Our righteousness, our life in Christ. And then verses in chapters 9 to 11, he talks about his faithfulness to Israel. And we are spiritual Israel. He talks now how God has been faithful to Israel. And God's faithfulness, he has provided justification. He is our justification. He is our righteousness. Now, after making the case, he comes to a crescendo in chapter 12 in verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, because of the indictment that is against all mankind, the judgment against mankind, God's judgment against sin, against the Jew and the Gentile, that no one can glory in his sight. But because of his love for us, God has provided himself as justification and a propitiation and appeasement to God on our behalf. He said, now, realizing everything that God has done for us and his faithfulness, what should be your response? He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that your response should be this, that you present your bodies to him as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. That you're not doing anything exceptional. You're doing what is reasonable. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me, well, what should be my response? My response should be, yes, Lord, yes to your will and yes to your way. My response is not my will, but thy will be done. Uh, because now I realize, Lord, that, that all things uh, of you, that starts with you. I didn't choose you, but you chose me. And, and you didn't wait uh, until the 20th or the 21st century to choose me. You chose me before the foundation of the world, before there was a mountain, before there was a sea, before there was a hill before there was a moon a sun or the stars you had already chosen me and in your own time you determined when I would be born you determined the lengths of my day you determined when you were going to speak to me ah uh, some some of us, uh, Lord, uh, we were on a dance floor. We were in a drunken stupor. We were in a drug-induced stupor. But he spoke to us and said, I'm calling you because I chose you before the foundation of the world. And the devil tried to kill you, but he couldn't because God had his hands on you. God said, you can't have him. That's my child. I got a purpose for him. I got a calling on his life. And 
I'm going to save him and raise him up for my own glory. Hallelujah. He, he, he made his own case. And then he, he said, now, uh, this, all things are through him. Uh, so I, I, I chose you, and, 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 and I made the way for you. And, and I am the vessel through which I'm going to funnel my spirit and my plan and my blessings and my purpose in your life. So I, I'm going to be that conduit. And all you have to do is to stay connected to me. And, and while you are connected to me, uh, I, I'm going to be a process of putting in you the things that are like me, and I'm going to be taking out of you the things that are not like me. I'm going to take out all of the things that you got from your father, the devil, before I came in. And now I'm going to put in the things of your new daddy, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you my DNA. So now you're going to act like me. You're going to talk like me. You're going to love like me. You're going to forbear like me. You're going to forgive like me. And I'm going to make you a light in the dark world. And I... And I Hallelujah. And, and, and I want you to understand that, that in order to do this, I, I'm going to be manifested as a man. So now I created the universe. I created the angels. I created humanity. And now I'm going to be manifested as one of my own creation. I'm going to be manifested a little lower than the angels. Hallelujah. Come here a minute, Brother Donnell. I'm going to be manifested as one of you. I'm going to be your brother so I can touch you and feel you and look in your eyes and talk to you and tell you all of the good things that I've prepared for you and the plan I have for your life. I'm not going to just write it and send it to you in a letter, but I'm going to be manifested and give it to you person to person so you can have a relationship with me. I want a relationship with you. I don't want to just write you and give you my word and send it to you, but I'm going to be manifested as my own word so I can have a relationship with you. Hallelujah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come where you are. I'm going to meet you on your turf so I can elevate you to my turf. So he was created a little lower than the angels. Met us where we were. And he says, now, uh, I'm going to elevate you because you are going to be my bride. And when I finish this process, I'm going to elevate you above the angels. And there's not going to be nothing above you except me. And I'm going to bring you into a relationship with me that we are one. Hallelujah. I'm going to transform you. But while you are in the earth, I got, I'm going to work through you. And I want you to be my, you're going to be my witness. And you're going to be my ambassador. But, but, but while you're in the earth, I want you to understand something, child. That, that you are not, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. And I don't want you to be conformed to the world. Now, I don't want you to get so comfortable with the world system that you try to pull the world into me. No, I want you to be poured into my image. Here's the world system, 
Uh huh. And I want you to understand while it might look good, it might feel good, don't allow yourself to be conformed to this world. Because if you aren't careful, what the world will do is take you and pour you into its shape and make you look like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, and there won't be no difference. No, I don't want you to be conformed to the image of the world, but I want you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you will walk in my word, that you will obey me, that you will be my extension in the world. And long as you are transformed into my image, baby, there's nothing can stop you. No matter what the devil throw after you, you'll be able to overcome because you are not trusting on the stuff that the world can give you, but you are drinking from living water. And then, why am I going to do all of this? Why am I going to do all of this? I'm going to do it for my own glory. I'm, I'm going because it started with me. I made it possible. It's me and you. It is the Jesus in me. He is on the inside. He is working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. But it's Jesus who is working on the inside. That's why I don't act like the world. That's why I can love my enemies. I can pray for them who despise rightfully use me. When the world thinks uh, that they're stopping me down, they're using me for, for a, a, a foot mat, but the Lord is elevating me. When Joseph uh, was walking with the Lord, uh, his own brothers uh, tried to kill him, but he tried, he strived to walk with God. He strived to walk with God. And it looked like the more he gave himself to walk with God the lower he got but the Bible says the Bible interweaved in there but the Lord was with Joseph the Lord was with Joseph and if God be for you who can be against you if God be for you who can be against you if God be for you who can be against you the Battle is the Lord's. So while the devil tried to box him and he couldn't get him to back away from God, uh huh, and box his head, his brothers tried to kill him, sold him away. Uh huh. I know some of you right now. You're going through some stuff. Uh-huh. Your, your spouse may have abandoned you. Your children acting crazy. They're on drugs and, and they crack cocaine and their minds are messed up. And you are trying to walk with God. The money is not coming in right. The job is messed up. The boss is against you. But you say, I'm going to keep on praising his name. No matter what's going on in my life, I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. I got a bad report from the doctor, but I can't stop praising his name. I lost my job, but I can't stop praising his name. My spouse walked out, but I can't stop praising his name. He's going to bring me out. I don't know how, and I don't know when, but I know he will because he's not a man that he should lie. And guess what? While I'm going through, he is with me. Come on, Brother Daniel. He is with me. He's yoked up with me. 
and he's telling me uh, something deep inside saying you can make it uh, something say uh, go ahead go ahead go ahead I'll never leave you uh, nor forsake you I'll never leave you uh, nor forsake you mama and daddy may leave you but I'll take you up your spouse might leave you but I'll never leave you God bless you when we get to the end to the through him then he says when you are delivered when Joseph the devil tried to box his head and then when he couldn't beat him into submission he tried to seduce him I hate the devil and you know what he hates me and I'm glad because we got a mutual admiration club If he can't get you with vinegar, he gonna try to get you with honey. So Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him. And he told her, I'm paraphrasing now, he told her on Monday, I can't do this evil. I can't sin against God. That wasn't good enough, so she came back on Tuesday. He said, I told you yesterday, and I'm telling you again today. I said, no. On Wednesday, she was right back. I told you on Monday, no. I told you on Tuesday, no. I told you on Wednesday, no. Yes, Miss Potiphar, you look like a Coke bottle. Uh-huh. And I'm a man. I'm an all man. But I know what I can do. Ah, but there's something here that tells me this is not of God. I can't do this evil in God's sight. So I got to tell you no because I want to keep myself in the will of God because I'm well the whole armor and I don't want to get out of the armor uh -huh, to get with you uh, because I'm messed up there as long as I'm in the armor I'm safe as long as Samson stayed in the armor he was safe but when he allowed Delilah to deceive him he got out of the armor Joseph said I'm gonna stay in the armor he get into the prison but the Lord was with him. He did good deeds in the prison. He wasn't rewarded. But the Lord was with him. There are people here. I said this to my wife. We don't have testimony service. And I'm asking the Lord for a venue that we can testify. Because they're, tes they're great testimonies that the congregation needs to hear. God is healing folks. He is doing miracles. He is blessing folks with cars, blessing them materially with jobs. But they have endured a while. But after they have endured a while, then the Lord delivered them. And the Lord wants us to make his deeds known. But the greatest deliverance a person can get is salvation. Hallelujah. Now, when Joseph was elevated, he became the prime minister of Egypt. Then when his brothers came, they thought that he was going to exact retribution. That's the world system. If he was acting like the world, he would say, uh-huh, now, who's got the gold? Mm -mm. Instead, he told his brothers, I recognized you when you first came. He broke down and cried and said, what you meant for evil, the Lord meant for good. He sent me ahead of you so I could be your savior. Now go get my daddy. God is doing something in you, my sister and my brother. You are not here today by accident. The Lord sent you here because he's doing something in you. 
Hallelujah. I, I, I testified about Sister Lillian. Sister Lillian was, had gone to a church, and her church was disbanded. And she went to another church, and, and she said, I don't know what he was preaching, but it wasn't Bible. She said, no, 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 that, that's not the Bible. That's not the Bible. That's not the Bible. And, and her niece said, why don't you go to church with me one Sunday? She came to the city of life. I'm giving God glory. This is not about pastor. She said she sat through one service, and she said, I feel like home. Uh, that's the scripture. When the word of God feeds you, you know that it's the word of God. When you got a sincere and an earnest heart, and you are really seeking the Lord, he will send you to the place where you can hear his word. He will make a way for you. Last Sunday, after church was out, she didn't even, I'm not going to leave the day without being baptized in his name. And she went to one of the parishioners, are you a member here? Who can I see? I want to go down in his name, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved there's salvation in the name of jesus there's healing in the name of jesus there's deliverance in the name of jesus there's forgiveness in his name there's joy in his name there's peace in his name there's happiness in his name there's wholeness in his name there's deliverance in his name it's all in the name of jesus and at the end every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus, that Jesus is the Lord. Buddha is going to bow. Muhammad is going to bow. Daddy Grace is going to bow. Father Divine is going to bow. It's all in the name of Jesus. It's of him, it's through him, and then when we are delivered, it's all about his glory. It's all about his glory. When we say yes to his will, when we agree with him, then we adorn the whole armor of God. He transforms us in a process until we are holy, walking, and living in the armor of God. And that is the breastplate of righteousness, our loins gird about with truth. It is the helmet of salvation. It's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's the shield of faith, and our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Those six components make up the whole armor of God. And you got to put it on and wear it every day. And it's not a one-time thing. You got to keep on putting it on. I want more of Jesus. Just a little more Jesus. Just a little more Jesus. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's stand. If you're here... You are here by divine appointment. And the Lord has sent you here because he wants to save you if you have not yet been born again. And that is to be born of the water, water baptism in the name of Jesus, and to be born of the Spirit. And that is the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives ability. If you haven't had those two, then you're not saved. Jesus says, except the man is born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. 
It's the only way. There's no sinner's prayer entrance into the kingdom. Please listen to me. That was written to folks who were already saved. How to be saved 